Welcome back to Living Hope. We are on day two, evening and morning, second day. Uh, I'm personally really excited about the evening time tonight. Pastor Jess is going to invite us to pray this prayer, Jesus, I am found once again. And he's dropping us into the story of the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. And he says this, I am lost and cannot see everything. I am finite and limited. And we get to say those words in the darkness, in the solitude of our room right before bed. And then Jesus comes and brings to our hearts this praise. Jesus, I am found mm -hmm. once again. This is going to be a powerful night. Pastor Jess, when you think about this lost and found day two, uh, what delights your heart? What gets you excited for what church is going to experience today? I'd say... Uh, the biggest thing is this, when you think that every single day of our life, mm. Jesus is committed to find us. Mm. And I think so many people don't get found because they don't take time to let him find them. Mm. But he's committed every day to run from the door of the estate to where we are at in our day and say, I've found you once again. Because the truth is we can't make it home unless he finds us. I can see the estate, I can see where I'm going, but I cannot make it home. Yeah. That is that is a, a tremendous of delight to me that he always finds us again. And then mm. uh, every day the Father's running. Mm. He's not sauntering to us. Mm. As soon as he sees us mm. making our way towards him, he is making a dash towards mm. us. That is, mm. for the whole day, that is a huge delight to me. So those are the things that in this chapter that I love thinking about mm. and uh, love writing about. And I, I, I will read this. In darkness, real darkness, the Spirit can be uh, can be probed by God mm. like no other time. Mm -hmm. And so there's something about nighttime where mm. God can probe us. And I think he can I think he can probe us and create a longing in us. I, I want you to find me once again. Mm -hmm. You need to be found today. And I think we lie to ourselves if we don't think we need to be found again by Jesus at the end of every day. And let me say this. Of all the things that I write down at the end of the day, this is the most important, and I hope this sticks the most. Mm. Because I think we should have that sense every day of our life that Jesus is finding us again, and we let him mm. find us again. That's beautiful. So just a reminder, you use the evening meditation, you read it with your family or your spouse, or if it's just you, you read it and you let God speak to you. And then when you crawl into bed at night in the darkness, the stillness of the house, you pray that final prayer, you mutter, you mumble, Jesus, I am found once again. Mm -hmm. Then you sleep in the safety of being found and you wake up in the morning and you come to the day part. And Pastor Marcus is going to talk to us about what we're going to experience here. Yes, day two, we're here and we're going to just, I love reading this story, you know, how we come to our senses, we realize we've been lost for the moment that we turn back, he's running towards us. He finds us. And, and right here, I love that, that part of the story where the sun's rehearsing, because I'm very much like that. You know, if I did something wrong, if I have something, you know, I have to apologize for, I rehearse in my head so many mm -hmm. times, trying to, you know, what's the best way that I can make up for myself? But the father doesn't even care about his excuses. Hey, you are my beloved son. Let's throw a party, everything. And so today what we're doing in our journals, mm -hmm. right, is writing a couple of things, three things that maybe we think may make us unlevel. Do, do your rehearsing. Think about it. Like what makes me just that God should not love me, mm -hmm. but right over it with some red, you mm -hmm. know, as bright as you can kind of pen, just write really big over everything. My beloved son or, you know, my beloved daughter, just cover that over and, and don't even look at that stuff anymore because I believe that's how God sees us. Right, Pastor, just, just tell us what was your heart when you, I love how you made this illustration. Did you do this yourself or something that happened? When you're writing this, I love how you put this together. Well, I see it in my brain all the time. I, and I have done this before, but I see it in my brain all the time. So use any three words. Use ten. doesn't matter. There was a, you don't, I'll just spell it out there. There's a guy in our church that I really love. And he went to a conference and they said, you know, what, what, what is the label that was on you? So I kind of got this idea from him. And so they had to kind of wear that label and had that label taken off. Well... When he was a little boy, he was called S-H-I-T, head, mm. his whole life. Horrible thing. And then the conference was about removing that label. So, in a sense, that's what this is. But I think it's mm. every label. In the Lord's Prayer, hallowed be your name. In other words, God's name, Father's name is ultimate. Yahweh's name is ultimate to everything else. 
So whatever label you would have that makes you unlovable, I uh, the, one of the labels that were on me from a very early time was stupid. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a list of things like that. And then you take that, and I don't like just in like red ink, you'd have to see how I do it, but <laughs> in red ink when I did it, it wasn't like just, uh, you know, you're my beloved son. It was, <laughs> you, my, oh, you, I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, I blotted it out. And I think that's what you want to do. You want to do something violent. And I envision this, instead of writing a bunch of stuff in a journal, like, oh God, I'm going to commit to this and that, that thing. And then you get a whole paragraph and feel good because I wrote a lot to God. Mm -hmm. I just see three things. And the big thing that highlights on the page is, you're my beloved son or you're my beloved daughter. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's, I think we got to realize that that our, um, our familial relationship with God wipes out, blots out mm. everything we've been called, everything we've been named. Wow. So that was what drove me to that. Wow. And by the way, because we're talking about Sabbath, mm -hmm. you can never come to real Sabbath mm. unless you come as a son or a daughter. Mm. It's just play, it's just rest. Maybe mm. you would call it a day off. You come to Sabbath because you come to Jesus, mm -hmm. who is our real. Come unto me, all you mm -hmm. who are. Mm -hmm. Jesus is always the real Sabbath. That's why. So, well, Mark, what does this have to do with Sabbath? Everything. Because how are you ever going to get to a real Sabbath if you don't make a practice out of Jesus being your Sabbath? Yeah. Wow. Beloved sons and daughters, we're praying today as you spend time, evening and morning, second day, that there would grace exploding in your life, in your history, and more important, in your future. We love you and we'll see you tomorrow.